Hi, how you doing? I hope you've enjoyed some of the short videos I've been posting here recently. A lot of people claim they're a great way to boost your channel metrics, and they're a lot of fun to make, so expect to see more of them over the next few weeks. Anyway, today I'm going to introduce you to five martial arts you've probably never heard of. Before we get going, I need to start by apologising about my pronunciation. I have no doubt at all that I've mangled some of the names in this list. And for that, I can only apologise. Apologize. We're going to start with one that's probably the most well-known of the five, and it's one that holds a very special place in my heart, as I spent a while in West Africa when I was a teenager. That's Dambe. Practiced by the Hausa people of northern Nigeria, Chad and Niger, it's a fascinating form of combat that's fought over the best of three rounds with the goal of knocking your opponent to the ground, known in Dambay as killing. Traditionally, rounds aren't timed and only stop when a fighter's knocked down, concedes, or both fighters are unable to continue. In much the same way as early classical pugilism, a fighter's hand, knee or body touching the ground counts as a knockdown. Each fighter has their dominant hand tightly bound in fabric and firmly tied cord. It's held at the back and referred to as the spear. The lead hand isn't used for striking, but for blocking, clenching and controlling distance. And as you may expect, it's known as the shield. Kicking's acceptable, and whilst wrestling used to be considered part of the system, it's rare nowadays. Because of the way the spear hand is wrapped, it becomes a solid, heavy weapon and spectacular knockouts are quite common. Despite being a relatively unknown art that's existed happily for hundreds of years, Dambe is rapidly growing in popularity due to the advent of the internet. A promotion called African Warriors FC is putting on organised events and showcasing them around the world. If you're interested, you can get a link to their YouTube channel in the description of this video. Pradal Saray <laughs> Originating in what is now Cambodia, roughly a thousand years ago, Pradal Saray has its origins in the hand-to-hand -hand fighting of the soldiers of the Khmer Empire. Similar to Muay Thai, it consists of punching, kicking, elbows and knees. There are, however, some differences. Direct clinching and knee strikes are less common, with fighters looking to create angles for elbow strikes. In fact, elbows from the clinch are the most common method of victory in the sport today. Pradal Saray was made illegal and practitioners were systematically targeted by the Khmer Rouge throughout the 60s and 70s, and many of them were executed. After the fall of the brutal regime, the tradition was revived, and while still small, it's a growing art. There's a growing attempt to raise the profile of the art internationally, with organisations welcoming foreign fighters, but in reality, most of the fighters are from Thailand looking to add to their experience and hopefully gain an edge in the more lucrative competitions in their homeland. Tatip Tatib is a traditional stick-fighting art from Egypt, with fairly compelling evidence that it was practised in one form or another as far back as 2500 BC. It's arguably one of the oldest fighting systems in the world. Known historically as Fan Anazaha Watatib, which translates directly as the art of being straight and honest through the use of a stick, it's usually carried out by men using a straight stick of approximately four feet in length. As you may expect for an art as old as Tatib, there's a lot of ritual involved, and often it's confused with North African and Arabic stick dancing, but in Tatib, people do still fight. Hitting the hands and arms is forbidden, with the rest of the body being fair game. The head is the prime target, with a single touch to the head counting as much as three to the body, gaining you the win. As with almost all of the arts on today's list, there's a small but dedicated number of practitioners attempting to re-engineer the historically authentic forms of the art and bring them to wider attention around the world. Kapu Kuialua. In the same year Daniel Mendoza lost the title of Champion of All England to John Jackson, Kamehameha the Great founded the Kingdom of Hawaii and unified the islands for the first time. 
He did so with the support of the Koa warrior group, who practised the art of Kapu Kuialua. The art was forbidden to any other than the king's guard. Kapu Kuialua literally means the forbidden art of two hits. His son and successor, Kamehameha II, had the foresight to realise his father had, in effect, created a situation where the art was likely to die out. He established three formal schools to teach the art of lua, as it became known. The art consists of a number of joint locks, bone-breaking techniques and throws, and was integrated into Danzenru Jiu-Jitsu by Seishiro Okazaki, through him to Wally J, and then from him to Bruce Lee. But that aside, the most famous practitioner of Kuialua was probably John Matua, who suffered a first-round defeat to Tank Abbott in UFC 6. I can only apologise for the pronunciation. It's going to get worse. Kracht Vare. If you were to travel back in time far enough in the British Isles, you'd find a huge variety of styles of wrestling, both loose grip and close grip. Each area or region had its own system, and there was a massive variety. Obviously, there was a lot of crossover between styles, and as travel became easier, styles started to merge, leaving the more well-known forms of wrestling like Cornish, Norfolk, Cumberland and Westmoreland. But in some of the more remote and inaccessible parts of the country, you can still find obscure and ancient forms of wrestling being carried out. The Scottish island of Barra in the Outer Hebrides is one such place. There, a small group of people still practice a form of wrestling almost unique in Britain. It's a loose grip style, which means there's no specific starting hold, unlike almost all the other surviving systems of wrestling. And as if that wasn't different enough, in Karakt Varey, you do not win by performing a successful throw forcing your opponent to the ground, or even by pinning them while on the ground. There is groundwork in the system, but to win, you have to force your opponent out of the wrestling arena. We have no idea how old this style is, but what we do know is that not far away on the neighbouring island of North Eust, a dedicated wrestling school and arena was constructed by the wonderfully titled Lord of the Isles in 1400. Barra isn't the only Hebridean island to have its own style of wrestling, but it's by far the most unusual. So, over to you. Have you trained in any of these arts? Have you even heard of them? I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts, so please stick something in the comments and let me know. Obviously, this is a far from comprehensive list of obscure martial arts, but if I've told you about one or maybe two that you hadn't heard of before, it'd be great if you'd consider subscribing. You know the drill by now, I'm sure, so I won't bang on about it. Keep your eyes open for the next video, and I'll see you soon. Fight team.